Before we get into the video, I want to make a disclaimer. Obviously, it is impossible to know with complete certainty what kind of player Len Bias would have been. But I do think there's evidence that allows us to speculate, and that at the very least, we can make an educated guess on how good he would have been. So let's get into it. Len Kevin Bias most of you NBA fans are familiar with this young man's tragic story, but for those of you who are not, let me at least give you a quick recap. Bias was a 6'8 small forward slash power forward who played four years in college for the University of Maryland. Bias's game was filled with potential and he was one of the best players in all of college basketball as he was a two-time ACC Player of the Year. Bias was also famously known to have epic battles in college with Michael Jordan, as they often appeared as equals in terms of talent and performance, or at least very close to it. Bias was a highly coveted prospect heading into the 1986 NBA Draft. Meanwhile in the NBA, Magic Johnson's Lakers and Larry Bird's Celtics were the premier teams in the league. The Celtics went on to win the 1986 NBA Championship, led by their stars Larry Bird, Kevin McHale, and Robert Parrish. That 86 Celtics team is still considered to this day as one of the greatest teams of all time. Fast forward to the NBA Draft, and thanks to a trade a couple years earlier with the Seattle Supersonics, the Boston Celtics owned the second overall pick in the draft the same year they won the championship. Cleveland had the first overall pick and needed a big man, so they selected the future all-star center Brad Doherty. So with the second pick, the Boston Celtics selected their exciting forward of the future, Len Bias. Adding a future Hall of Famer to the all-time great and defending champion Celtics team appeared to be a solidifying factor in continuing this Boston dynasty. But then, less than 48 hours later, while he was at his college dorm room celebrating with his friends, Len Bias had a seizure and collapsed. Soon after medical attention arrived, it was confirmed that Bias had passed away at the age of 22. It was simply a coke overdose, making Len Bias the poster child of the NBA's terrible drug issues in the 1980s. Naturally, this tragedy has gone on to make Len Bias arguably the greatest what if in NBA history. So now that we're all informed, let's get into the meat of this video. First off, let's talk about Bias's skills and establish what defined his game and what made him such a unique talent. As I mentioned earlier, Bias was a 6'8 wing who could switch between the 3 or 4 spot on the court. He was lean, but very muscular. As a 22 year old, he hadn't fully grown into his man body yet, but he still appeared as if he was ready to bully grown men in the post once he hit the NBA. He was incredibly athletic with a remarkably high vertical leap, especially considering his size. Maybe his best quality was his beautiful and smooth mid-range jump shot. With his solid footwork, tall stature, long arms, and high two-foot leap, his jump shots were extremely tough to contest. He was very efficient from the field as well, shooting about 54% over the course of his college career. He wasn't much of a playmaker or a facilitator, but his two great gifts were essentially his scoring and rebounding. These are the key aspects of his game that I want us to pay attention to. I spent a lot of time thinking about other players in basketball history who were similar to Bias in terms of their stature, strength, athleticism, position, their skill set, and even their numbers in college. Here's a few names I came up with. Dominique Wilkins, Larry Johnson, and Xavier McDaniel. Now let me make this clear before I continue. I think Bias would have been better than all of these guys, even Dominique, as great as he was. But what I'm doing is trying to get a basis to work from, looking at their college and pro statistics to give us kind of a general idea in what kind of a player we might be getting in Bias. All of these guys had varying degrees of great athleticism and strength just like Bias. They were all pretty good scorers who had an offensive style similar to Bias as well. Take a look at the numbers from each of these stars from their last season in college. They all clearly had high expectations too, based on the fact that they were all top 4 picks in the draft. Notice their high scoring and rebounding numbers and also their lack of assists. Again, this is showing their similar tendencies. All of these players went on to be all-stars in the NBA, although Dominique was clearly on another level from the other two. In my opinion, Xavier McDaniel and Larry Johnson was Len Bias's floor. There's no way he wouldn't have been as good as these two players in the NBA, although like I said before, I think he likely would have been much better than both of them. The most comparable career I think he would have had would have been to Dominique Wilkins. Both great leapers, similar footwork, same height, same hot spots on the court, and so on. Remember how I said Bias had epic scoring battles with Michael Jordan in college while they played for Maryland and North Carolina? Well you know who had epic scoring battles in the pros with Jordan? Dominique Wilkins. This is what I envision for Bias as a pro. 
like Dominique 2.0 on the offensive side of the ball, averaging 26 to 32 points per game in the prime of his career while accumulating 8 to 10 rebounds a game. But I said he would be better than Dominique, but that wasn't because of the offensive side of the court, but the defensive side. Bias showed incredible potential in college with his defensive prowess. He could frustrate players, cause turnovers, had a tremendous wingspan, and was a terrific shot blocker, often blocking shots you would think would be out of his reach. Dominique didn't have that on the defensive end, not even close. Another thing about the solo duels in college between Bias and Jordan. Bias had arguably greater numbers in college than Jordan did, and based on their talent and what we saw from them on the floor, he appeared every bit as ready for the pros as Jordan did. And how ready was Jordan? Well, let's put it this way. In Michael's rookie year, he took the NBA by storm, averaging 28.5 points per game, 6 rebounds, and 6 assists on 51% shooting. If MJ is any indication, then Bias would have had a significant impact immediately upon entering the league. Which brings me to my next point. Bias was joining the fantastic Boston Celtics. The year he would have been a rookie, the Celtics went on to the NBA Finals where they lost in 6 games to the Los Angeles Lakers. If Bias was as good as I'm projecting him to be, then I can't possibly see how he wouldn't have been the difference in that series and helped the Celtics win their second straight championship. Keep in mind, Larry Bird was the starting small forward and McHale was the starting power forward, so the plan likely would have been to bring Bias off the bench. But with Larry dealing with ongoing back problems and with McHale trying to push through the playoffs with a broken foot, there would have been plenty of minutes available for Bias to shine as a star and make his impact. In an interview with Bill Simmons, Larry said that if Bias had lived, he would have retired in 1988, meaning the passing of the torch would have happened very quickly between Bias and Bird. It's likely then that Jordan and Bias would have gone on to have many epic battles through the years in the Eastern Conference playoffs. One thing I'm almost sure of is that by the end of Bias' career, we wouldn't have seen him as just another one of those star players that Jordan kept from winning championships. Because like I said, I think the Celtics would have won the championship in his 1987 rookie season. So in recap, how good do I think Bias would have been? Well essentially, Dominique on offense with a hint of Larry Johnson and Sean Kemp, and significantly better than all of those guys on defense. Add on at least one championship ring, but maybe even a few if things went right. It's also important to keep in mind that he passed away from a coke overdose. If coke had continued to be an issue for him, it's possible that it could have screwed up his career even if he had lived. That has in fact happened with other great players in the NBA's history. But again, this is just my educated guess on the player he would have been. Let me know your educated guesses in the comments section. Thanks for watching as always, make sure to like and subscribe for more NBA content, and I'll see you guys in the next video.